Hello everyone, I'm Leroy Harris, Programming Librarian here at the New Ulm Public Library, and I'm very happy to welcome you back to our second annual Stories for the Season. This year we've done a great collaboration together with the State Street Theater, New Cat, and we're very excited to have the Brown County Historical Society joining us this year to provide us with our reading material. Uh, all of the uh, readings that you'll be hearing come from the Brown County Historical Archives. And so they'll include letters, personal remembrances, newspaper clippings, as well as some fun recipes. We hope you enjoy these stories for the season. Today, I'll be reading a personal remembrance by Sam Cooke, in which he titled, In Stitches. The frumpy old booties sag against one another in a corner of the closet. Once their ripstop nylon shells were orange and bright, now they are smudged and torn. Once their goose down filling was full of puff and bounce, now it's droopy and matted. They should have been chucked long ago, I suppose. But to understand why they haven't been, you have to go back to the Christmas of 1974. When the booties arrived in the cardboard box, they weren't booties at all. They were a few pieces of ripstop nylon, some clumps of goose down sealed in plastic, a couple of knit cuffs, and a sheet of instructions. The box had come from one of those sew-it-yourself kit companies to a guy who didn't know his bobbin from his zigzag. But I was excited. I was going to make my wife a pair of booties for Christmas. I had time, plenty of time. I started in November. I had moral support. A couple of women at work and the wife of a friend said they'd give me any tips I needed. What I didn't have was skill. I found out fast that I wasn't a seamstress or seamster, whatever you call it. I set up a card table in an extra room, shut the door to keep Phyllis, the intended receiver, at bay, got out all my booty ingredients, and uncased the sewing machine. From the very beginning, that machine was the enemy. And this was supposed to be a decent machine. Lord knows Phyllis could run it. She could make that thing hum. She made herself all kinds of clothes that looked just like store-bought. Throughout the ordeal, Phyllis knew I was making her something, of course. So she'd stand outside the door and try to guess what it was. I'd sit inside answering, no, no, no. How do you thread a bobbin? Like the tower talking to a pilot in an emergency, Phyllis tried to talk me through it from the other side of the door. When I realized it was useless, I put away my booty stuff and let her come in. We got the bobbin threaded. Out with the booty stuff again, on with the project. First, you singe the edges of the nylon with a candle flame to keep them from fraying, the instructions said. What's on fire in there? The voice outside the door would say. Hey, get out of here, I'd say. Did Betsy Ross have to put up with this? Giggles. Eventually, I got the fabric singed. Then we got down to the needlework. That's when the enemy was vicious. It would miss stitches. It would refuse to penetrate a glob of material or it would run amok like a car with its accelerator pedal stuck. I broke needles. I broke out in sweat. I said bad words. It wasn't all my fault. If ever a machine was made that was sexist, it was a sewing machine. They're built for slim little women fingers with nice pointy fingernails. Ever try to run one with pudgy little boy digits and smushed bitten nails? Hopeless. Each night I'd come home, eat supper, and report to my cell. I hated those booties. I hated that machine. Finally, I could stand it no more. I boxed up my booty stuff, cased up the enemy, and drove directly to the sewing machine store. I told the man what I was up to. I told him my problems. Hmm, said the sewing machine man. He looked at the machine for a long time. Tell you what, he said. Why don't you trade this unit in on a new one and give your rifle a real nice present? I nearly took his head off. I'm sure he meant well, but at the moment, it just wasn't what I wanted to hear. When I calmed down, we talked rationally again. Something about a, a good cleaning and an alignment. Now we're talking, I said. Back to the cell. Finally, the enemy and I began to see eye to eye. The machine was less belligerent, and I had decided to give it another chance. We had become friends, a team. We drilled those little stitches 10 to the inch, just like the instruction said. Make a seam, stuff in the down. Make a seam, stuff in the down. I quit sweating. I quit swearing. The booties began to look like the ones in the instructions. Finally, we stitched on those knit cuffs. Ta-da! It was still a few days before Christmas. Not since I was a kid had I waited with such anticipation 
for the day to arrive. I was squirming when Phyllis began tearing the wrappings off the package. I relived the entire process as she stripped the paper off. The initial excitement, the frustration, the hate, the success. She popped the lid off the box and stared at the booties. She loved them. Never before or since has the giving of any gift thrilled me as much. Every winter evening, Phyllis padded around the house in those things. Her feet were even warm when she got in bed at night. She wore them until they were tattered and battered, and she got another pair for a gift, fancy blue ones with padded soles and drawstring tops. She still keeps the old orange ones in the corner of her closet. Both of us know why. <laughs>